Welcome to part two of the unofficial setup guide for the Orbit Pro solution. So in part one, if you've uh, seen that on the uh, user group page, that is going through all the pieces and parts that make the Pro kit different than the studio or the base. And so those of you that had questions about what do I do with all these pieces and parts and what are they for and how do I assemble them, uh, we've answered uh, most of those questions, I think, in that part one video. What we're now going to do is take the uh, either speed rail or truss system, and I've chosen truss, uh, and I'll explain some of uh, the reason there. We're going to take this truss, we're going to assemble this, we're going to put it on stands, and we're going to have our fully functioning marble orbit kit hanging from this solution. Now, uh, what the truss d is going to do is change uh, just a little bit of how we use the support brackets that are given to us in the Pro Kit. Instead of having the two support uh, brackets that are attached to each of the uh, mounting plates, we are going to actually remove those and use this truss and hang it the plates from these uh, clamps. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth. I've chosen the truss, and I might recommend you do the same. Um, if you fall into the category of you want to be able to maybe take all of your rail kit, right, whether it's a truss or speed rail, you want to break that down into a small manageable, maybe find even a, a bag or a carrying case that you can put your solution in and truly be mobile with that. Uh, if you plan on renting speed rail uh, for on-site location shoots and you can get that locally, or you have a large production van that you can put uh, 10 foot or longer uh, sections of speed rail in, then great. Uh, speed rail works just fine. Uh, it's easy to get in most large uh, cities and even some of the smaller ones if they have good metal shops, that's available. What I like about the truss for me is it is already designed to be modular and so it's going to be easy for me to take this and break it down into three foot sections and put it into a bag and put all of the uh, pieces of hardware that are required to assemble a truss. You've got uh, some of these connectors as well as uh, pins that uh, go with it, both the pins that go in and hold the large connectors in place as well as the cotter pin that holds that larger pin in place. So we'll uh, discuss the merits of that, but either way you go, speed rail, this uh, truss system, it's really uh, you know, your personal preference and what you have access to. Again, this was just maybe a little bit easier for me to do. I actually did a video with uh, some speed rail. I had some uh, that the company I ordered it from actually sent me longer sections that I wanted. And then I started realizing what it was gonna take to couple that speed rail together. Uh, to have shorter sections and make a long section. And I decided rather than have to drill things out in a very precise fashion in order to use another type of coupler, I decided uh, from another uh, person in the user group that this truss was maybe uh, the way to go for me. So I decided to return the speed rail I had, get this truss, and that's what we're going to utilize. So. Uh, again, if you didn't watch part one, my name is Bruce. I'm one half of the Dad's Talk Tech YouTube channel. Uh, that may or may not mean anything to you. I'm going to say probably may not, uh, just because we are a very small channel. Hopefully this video helps you overcome any apprehension you have about jumping in and getting started with your Marble Orbit Pro kit and getting it assembled and putting it through its paces. I guarantee you, once you get into using it and you get over some initial intimidation about all the pieces and parts, uh, you are going to love this kit. It's gonna be something that you wanna uh, use all the time and you find new creative ways to leverage it. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in and uh, get this process started. So we're gonna try and do this as quickly as possible, uh, cut down on the amount of time that the video takes and uh, get to the good stuff, right? Which is actually utilizing the the device itself. So first thing we need to do is actually get our stands and our truss all ready to go. So the way this truss system works is it uses a connector that uh, allows you to uh, bridge the gap between the sections of truss. I'll put a graphic on screen so you can see this closer up uh, rather than try and uh, bring it close to the camera. So you'll put one in each side um, and then one thing you'll find about this is there is an orientation in terms of a larger side the way it uh, inserts the pin uh, and the receiver side. So you just want to make sure that you have the large size pointing um, on the outside of the rail. On the outside of the rail is where uh, these pins are inserted and so there is a thick and a thin uh, or thick and skinny side 
to work with these uh, particular pins. And again, I'll put a pin graphic up so you can see if you're interested in this uh, particular solution, you can see what it is that uh, you'd be getting into. And so we'll have uh, the need for two cutter pins and two of these larger pins. And I'm, I've got some that are in various conditions because I bought my truss used. It was uh, cheaper to do so. Uh, in the United States, these trusses are a little more expensive than uh, some of the other countries. Matter of fact, uh, the gentleman that came up with the truss idea is in France, and they were significantly less expensive even after the currency um, conversion, uh, much cheaper than what they are in the United States. But uh, I got a decent deal on these used on uh, Amazon, so I went ahead and, and got those. So one of the things you'll find is, uh, depending on your connectors and that, uh, you could have to motivate the pin a little bit, right, uh, into uh, the solution to get it to go through. And uh, this is not going in super great. I might not be able to get the pin into this one. So we'll just, uh, I might actually try and get another connector since I have multiple ones and see if that one works better. When you buy this truss while we're uh, working on this, uh, it should come with the connectors. So just make sure that it does. Uh, you can buy them separately if you need to, uh, but hopefully you don't have to do that because they, uh, it is an extra expense that you'd have to, to incur. So I'm gonna see maybe if this, if I flip it around, if this other side is maybe a little bit better. Yes, that works much better. Now we'll see if that end up just creating that problem and shifting it over to the other side. Let's see how this one works. Almost got it. Get to this next one so that we don't get bogged down. And I'm probably going to just fast forward as much of this uh, as I can as I go through, because I think once you've seen this uh, done on one, it's, uh, you know, is the same process uh, all the way across. So that is it, we've got the truss all assembled. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my stand set up. All right, I'm gonna jump out of the picture here and just show you uh, some of the kit that we're gonna work with. So again, obviously we looked at the speed rail that we put together. Those are the clamps that are going to connect to the support brackets for the orbit. And then let's go ahead those are the stands, those are the Kupo 14 foot, very sturdy stand. We're gonna get these stands ready to go at either end and then we will need to attach the uh, brackets and then uh, with brackets or clamps, however you'd like to refer to them. And so how this works is it opens up and this wraps around the two inch rail for this uh, truss and then we are going to attach the mounting bracket uh, here and then two of the mounting brackets will be connected on uh, one on each end and then in the middle we will have the bracket that holds the uh, Orbit Pro itself. So I'm going to go ahead and set these stands up and uh, I'll probably just fast forward through this. <laughs> okay on the stand I'm just going to uh, raise the pin here for now okay and lock this into place I will raise this to height once we uh, put the rail on top of it so I'm going to uh, not raise the stands up to the full height I'm going to use them at until uh, after I get the truss system attached to it. It's going to make it a little easier for me to lift 
not having to raise it as far over my head. Uh, what I need to do is go ahead and open up the Orbit Pro Kit. both sections open. I'm going to go ahead and pull the light ring out. I'm going to put that aside really quick because we're not going to need it for a little bit. And while I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and pull the remote out as well. Okay. And then uh, let's pull these straps out in case I decide to do that. And let's put the moon on top of the light along with our First and foremost, what we need to do is get our port brackets out. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer. Because I'm using the truss, we're going to pull these off of each of our steel support plates. So we're just going to remove this. And this is going to connect to our clamp instead. So, and I'm going to just put the screw head back on top of this. I'm going to put these into the kit. And I'm probably going to, even though I'm not going to be using this unless I run across some speed rail someplace, I'm going to put this all back together when I store it so that I keep my kit all contained in the wonderful carrying bag that uh, it was shipped in. And so, uh, one of the things we need to do, if you don't know where any of these parts are, please uh, refer back to the first video. But uh, here is our baby slash junior pin. Uh, this handle does not come with the Pro Kit, so just be mindful of that. I'll put a link to it if you're interested in getting this. This is what's going to keep it secured to the uh, stand, the pin that it comes with. So this screw on top is what go through, will go through the plate. So we're just going to secure this. We've got a wrench that was included in our kit that we will use. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put one side of the truss. I'm going to put the clamps on. And I'm going to get another one. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just load the clamps onto the other side for when we get to that. Here, I'll just hold this on my leg. So I'll need to re remove these uh, wing nuts. And uh, a note here, these clamps I'll link uh, below, but these clamps uh, come with a screw that do not fit through the mounting plate for the orbit. So I'll link the replacement screws and wing nuts that I found. I actually reused the lock washer and washer that came with it because um, there was no reason to uh, replace that. So here we can just slide the mounting plate on and I can tell that I'm going to need to um, do some work on that to get this uh, so that it is square or basically so it's going to sit flat on the plate. So 
So you probably couldn't see this, but I put the pin on the floor and then loosened the clamp. And what that allowed me to do was just get to the point where now the clamp was square on the uh, plate. So that's kind of a little, little cheat you can do uh, so that you can make sure that that is flat. Um, you will want it flat. There we go. So the first side is connected. Um, I will hold it up so you can see it. And pull this your way a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. So that is side number one. I'm going to flip this around, hopefully without breaking anything. And that way I can work on the other side and you can hopefully see what I'm doing. All right, here we go. So uh, let's get another bracket out of the kit. Once again, let's take off the styrofoam. Styrofoam will go into the holder that it came out of. And then I'm going to unscrew the speed rail adapter on each side. And then I'm just going to put that screw back on and put that back where it belongs. Again, I don't want to assume that I will never use speed rail, so I'm going to keep my kit intact exactly as it shipped to me so that I don't have any problems with that later. And again, we have to take the screw out of the top of this junior slash baby pin connector and we're going to screw that to our plate. And again, this wrench is included in your kit, so make sure you keep it with it so that you always have that available. I'm actually gonna turn this around a little bit because I want that accessible. There we go. All right, now we can connect it to our mounting bracket. I'm gonna slide the kit out of the way. I'm gonna slide my level out of the way. And again, I'm using a full four foot level uh, once we get this in the air, just to make sure that uh, my stands are set to the same height and that we are perfectly level across, you know, almost 10 feet. So these, uh, these sections, of truss are uh, one meter or 3.28 feet. So three of them is going to give me just under 10 feet of, uh, of distance. Uh, I could technically just put two together, but I don't know that that's gonna be big enough for anything, but, but uh, kind of a, an odd configuration of the uh, arm uh, on the orbit. So I don't know that that uh, is really, you know, truly valid for me. So I'm letting the plate basically uh, make sure that this is um, perfectly level, or at least as level as I can get it. All right, so uh, we are ready for a pretty big step here. Uh, sorry, I'm going to cut my head off a little bit on this. Uh, actually, let me raise the camera up. Okay, so we are, uh, as I said, going to complete a pretty big step here, and uh, we are going to lift the truss system up to our nice stands. Uh, I'm not sure if I have these, the distance they need to be, but they're on wheels. And so that's one of the nice things about this configuration is my stands can roll to where they need to. Uh, and I think I need to open that. Uh, I forgot to unscrew that so that it wasn't tight. What I'm talking about is here. So this is what is going to secure this support to the pin from the stand. So if you can see this pin, that pin is uh, what we need to put this on. And I can just do the one side for now and then I'll open the other one when I get over there. So I'm just literally going to uh, kind of manhandle this a little bit, slide it over the pin 
and it looks like I might even have to change that a little bit more and then just slide this uh, rail, just slide the stand over. Let me try loosening this just a little bit more. Yep, that was what it needed. And so uh, here we go. This um, puts our rail onto the stand. This is very manageable from a weight perspective. These trusses, uh, each section of 3.28 feet or one meter, uh, weigh about eight pounds. And so it's uh, you know doable for a single person to be able to lift these and place them on the stand. And with my stand on wheels, that allowed me to just uh, you know, slide the stand where I needed to in order to um, make sure that my length was, was sufficient. So you can see um, here is the rails already put up. Uh, and if I wasn't explaining everything to such detail, that probably would have been maybe a 10 minute uh, type of endeavor. Uh, and so here is our other set of rails. What we need to do then is get that uh, last support bracket prepared to hold the Orbit Pro itself. And we'll find uh, basically the midpoint of our speed rail system. And that's where our clamp is, is going to go. Okay, so here is a closer look at what we've got in terms of the truss and the connection to the mounting plate. So you can see that clamp clamps around the truss bracket at the end. We've got a screw that holds that to the plate and then that is connected the same way on the other side. And then we have our screw to the pin, to our stand. Okay, so the pin to the stand and our nice stand that's on wheel so I can move it as need to. And then when I'm ready to actually do the orbit, I can lock those casters so that there's not any kind of movement associated with it being on the wheels. And then again, here's our truss. And we'll have the exact same configuration on this end. So you can see and you can see how I made that flat. And it's very important that that be flat. And again, my truss was used, so it's kind of uh, marked up, dinged up and everything, but that's okay because it's gonna get even more abuse. Okay, so we are going to figure out where the half or midpoint is. All right, here we go. So let's uh, figure out, I believe we need to be about 59 inches. We're gonna call 59 close enough. It's about 118. It's actually a little bit more than 118, but we're not gonna get too crazy with that. So 59 inches is our midpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and get these two clamps uh, connected. And again, I think I'm just gonna put them very uh, loose at this point so that I can use the plate to level it. And obviously with the um, truss, you have to be very careful that you pick locations to work that um, do not have the cross members, the support beams on them. And I can already tell this isn't level, but that's okay, we'll get our plate and we will position this as such. Okay, washer, then lock nut, then wing nut. Or lock washer, sorry, then wing nut. There we go. Okay, now let's uh, dig into the kit 
and I'll show you this so that you can see it well. Uh, we need our mounting plate. Okay, so, so here is the mounting plate again. And we are going to orient it like this. We need the extra bolt and nut that are in the top pouch in with the other hardware. So it'll be in this baggie. And if you don't know where this is, again, refer to the first video. Uh, we actually deal with all of the hardware in the first zipper section right off the bat. And I'm gonna put this nut into that zipper section again for safekeeping because I don't wanna lose it. So now what we're gonna do is actually uh, put this screw through. And this is the sealing plate. It doubles as the mounting bracket for the Pro Kit. And then we are going to tighten this. There we go. And this is what the Orbit Pro will hang from. So, okay, if you can just see this uh, hanging down, this is the bottom part or the locking area for the pin on the extension arm. So this is going to attach. Now, before we get too far down the road here, I'm actually gonna check and see how level this is uh, lengthwise. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this on my braces and it looks like um, I am a little high on this end. So this end needs to come up just ever so slightly, which uh, that's fine uh, at this point. I'm, I'm actually not too terribly concerned about that because I haven't put this to the height that I want yet. And I think I actually went a little too far. Okay. Let's see how we are side to side. Because um, you do want this to be level uh, across both directions. And there is some flex. Um, so, you know, this, uh, this whole thing is a little bit high on this end. And that's, uh, you know, probably one of the things that's going to be difficult to deal with uh, in general here. Uh, so what I'm thinking is you may need to have some washers or something else. And I'm thinking probably a large washer, something about the size of the base of this clamp so that you can uh, help center this. What's going to happen if you don't center this uh, solution is your orbits are not going to um, keep your subject in the same uh, relative position as it makes its, its way around. It's going to be slightly off uh, and so it's going to adjust its, um, its orbit, uh, if you will, in that process. So uh, that's something that we'll need to adjust just a little bit. Um, let's do something here, though. I wonder if that's translating into not being level at the plate. I'm guessing it is, but let's just take a look. Yeah, so looks like lower on my left hand side. So this side of the rail needs to um, be padded out and push it down just a little bit uh, in order to make it level across. So I'm gonna see if I have something that's going to let me uh, do that before we get too far. Okay, so I think I've solved my level problem and um, I'll just maybe hold this up here. This is how I did it. I had some uh, washers from another uh, project and I just literally put a washer between the clamp and the plate. Um, all right, so I put that washer in that uh, I think appears to have gotten me level side to side. We'll adjust the level once we get the railing up to the height that we want. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that next step. And because I'm working alone, I'm going to have to uh, kind of be careful about how I do this because I'm only going to be able to go so far and not bend my plate um, on either end. So I'll have to kind of work my way uh, up to the height that I ultimately want to be. This would be a great uh, place to have a helper and have this be a two person job. Uh, you can do it alone, but uh, I'd recommend just being very careful. The other thing you could do is put this up to uh, the height that you want and then mount the rail 
uh, on top of that, so you don't have to do this. Uh, the only challenge there is now you're working at uh, a considerable height potentially, and uh, all that work that you're doing up at that height is going to be more challenging. So I'm gonna put this up a ways because I want this uh, you know, to show off kind of what uh, kind of height you can get with these stands and this rail kit. Uh, what's part of what's you know, super cool about this whole configuration is you've got the ability to uh, raise this up. These stands will actually reach a height of 14 feet. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty cool. So now you can see the rail up high. I'm gonna bring that up maybe just a little more still. And now I'm primarily concerned about making sure this is level from side to side. And it is not. Looks like this side needs to come up just ever so slightly. Looks pretty good there too. All right, so you can see the mounting plate is there just waiting for the drop arm to be attached. And again, if uh, you saw the first video, this arm, you unscrew this, this is what's going to attach it to our support here. And then you'll slide that till it's flush. And tighten that nicely. And there we go. Voila. And of course, this is pretty close to the minimum that uh, this will drop. Okay. And this is where we will actually install the orbit itself. And so let's go ahead and get that um, body. So uh, as you go to install this, uh, you want to make sure you have to take this nut off because we are going to reverse the order that the lock washer and the nut are in. So I'm gonna put our nut back on here and our lock washer and uh, make sure that the marble name is readable right side up. Here's our power button. So we'll go ahead and just uh, start installing our orbit onto the drop rail. And you will have to spin it quite a bit to get this on. So just be mindful of that. So we've got this oriented correctly. What we need to do now is tighten This, it's gonna compress that lock washer and we should be good to go. So this should be steady. I'm gonna go ahead and put this wrench in my pocket. Now we need to remove our nut here, not the one in front of the camera. And we need the arm mount bracket, which again is still in our pro kit. As you can hear the Velcro being removed. Again, remember, save all of this foam uh, with the Pro Kit. You're going to want that so that uh, when you take it on the road, you've got everything all packed up and safe. So uh, the knobs for this orient up. You'll uh, know that you've done it wrong when you try and mount the light and you don't have these holes on the bottom to mount the light to. And then these are going to align with grooves that are on the Orbit Pro's spindle. And so you just slide this up. We're gonna hand tighten uh, these hex nuts that require an Allen wrench. And you'll know that you've got that because it has a little bit of play, but uh, it's not gonna turn very much. And then we put the screw on the bottom as another safety measure. I'm only going to tighten this a little bit. I don't think there's a lot of need to get too terribly crazy with that. And uh, then we'll use the Allen wrenches. The Allen wrenches are stored in the light ring. So uh, just remember that you've got those in there. So let's go ahead and actually get our light ring um, out. Here's the light ring again in the Pro Kit. It is going to have the carrying case with it. And don't forget this uh, foam 
remove the foam, do not discard it. You'll use that anytime you transport this. And uh, obviously be careful, there is a laser on here. We also need the uh, two screws that hold the light on, and that is in the upper pouch. And I always put mine back in the uh, Ziploc baggie it goes in. That's probably just me being overly anal which uh, I think maybe by definition, that's kind of what engineers uh, do. And so I'm gonna put this screw in here and get down nice and low and line that hole up. And you can start to put that light ring on. And there are two screws that hold that in place. And boom, we are good to go. Now, we can take the remote and store that over here. It is magnetized, so you can just put the remote there and it's gonna stay. It is the larger of the two Allen wrenches that you'll use to tighten these uh, hex screws, which I should have done while it was still without the light ring, but uh, I will make this work. I don't think this has to be like super duper cranked down. Um, we've got the nut on the bottom and there's two of those screws that hold it in. I don't think it's going anywhere. And there we go. So we've now got um, everything but the arms attached. So the arms, we do have a little bit uh, of an option of how we want to configure that. And so um, there isn't really a default configuration. You are free to choose. You can put uh, combination of arms with the Pro Kit. Again, remember you're going to get uh, two 16 and two 24 inch sections. And so we can decide we want, you know, a 24 and then a 16. We can go 16 and then a 24. We can actually even do the two 24s on one side. Um, and they even make a super arm configuration where you only have one 16 inch arm on one side and then all the other arms on the other. That does require extra weight not included with your kit. So you would have to get some sandbags and then make sure that you have that weighting uh, done properly. So with that, I think what I'm going to do is uh, the 24 inch and then a 16 inch drop. So out 24 inches and then a 16 inch uh, arm that can drop. And so I'm gonna move the end cap. So I just unscrewed the end cap from the 24 inch. That's where it was on mine. I think that's where it ships by default, but you can put it in either one. You will know, um, actually the 16 inch looks like it's threaded on both sides. The 24 is only threaded on one. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one of my 24 inch arms in and then tighten the two screws that hold it in place. There we go. Here is the arm joint. So if you remember that. Okay, so here is our arm joint uh, and you are gonna wanna position this so that the um, arm can be rotated up and down. Okay, so this is going to basically lay on its side. Uh, you can, you're probably gonna want to put the Condor Blue uh, labeling up because that's gonna give you access to the Allen wrench uh, connections. And that is how with the small Allen wrench, you will tighten down these arm joints to the arm. There we go. And then I'm gonna put the 16 inch with the pipe thread on the end there and tighten it. There we go. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. So I have the 24 inch that I need to remove the end cap on. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this end cap. And I'm gonna put this, these screws are not loose enough. Put this into the arm connector, there we go. And then I'm gonna thread this into the 16 inch side. And one thing I just realized is I put that uh, end cap in on that other end, but I'm probably gonna want to 
uh, loosen that a little bit just because um, I'm going to want to put something to hang my camera over there. There we go. That is one. And here is the other. And then make sure you slide this back into the tool holder. And again, don't snap it into place. Slide it from the end and push it towards the other end of the, uh, the other snap. There we go. And then uh, I'm most likely going to want this arm up. And then I can put some weight on that arm once I know what I want to put on there to counterbalance my camera. So I'm going to take this end off here because I'm going to need it off temporarily. And I'm going to get the camera mount. So again, we have two items that will allow you to connect uh, a device or devices to the arm. We have the single. Uh, I saw Josh use the single to connect the camera. Um, I used, I think, the double one time, and my thinking is if I've got, you know, less counterweight uh, to have to worry about on one end, uh, then I might put my camera that's heavier over here um, on this single single end versus, you know, the counterweight if it fits in the end cap, then then fine. If you're using extra weight and, and maybe even a sandbag, then you may want to opt to have this on either side. But I think both of them probably are pretty strong. So I'm not too terribly worried about which one of these I use to hold the camera on. And I'm just going to put this uh, on here close to the very end, not necessarily on the exact end. There we go. And then screw this end cap back in. Now, when we go to load up the weight, um, there are a couple places we can mount the uh, support loops. So the support loops are a couple fold here. So we can put this uh, right on the arm. There's a hole there that's quarter 20. And then there are two openings on the drop mount, and actually I just realized I put one of my curved ones uh, over here, which I should not have done. This, There are two different ones. You see this one has got a curvature to it, so it's going to go around a round uh, pipe. And so um, this is for the drop arm. And the other one has a flat, no curvature. Okay and it's going to go into here much better. Yeah, that feels better already. Okay, sorry about that. But this, these little uh, flubs are, you know, good learning experiences, right? So um, I'm going to move this slightly out of the way there. And uh, again, this is one of the curved ones so that it uh, matches the curvature of the drop arm. There we go. And then, um, I'll put one over here. I don't know if I'm gonna need to have this on while I'm installing the weight for the support. We'll see. And then here is our uh, camera mount. So this just slides up after you loosen this and it is going to install right in the quarter 20 threaded area on the bottom side of this arm with the mount that I installed a little bit earlier. There we go. And then you can adjust where it is. Once we get this uh, arm, and we're going to want to probably tilt this arm down, and what we're going to be achieving or trying to achieve, if you can uh, imagine this, is this arm let me back this up. To illustrate my point, I'm going to take the bubble level off of the moon, and I'm going to use my moon to uh, kind of illustrate something here that wasn't 100% uh, apparent to me at first when I was watching the videos. So um, when we install the moon, this moon gives us where we we're, we're generally want to have our subject at, and uh, that's great. 
But one of the things that, um, you know, we probably need to talk about here is the arm should be able to reach the level of our subject so that the camera as it hangs is really um, perfectly level with our target. So this moon not just is something to focus on, but uh, we can aim our camera lens at it. And if your camera, and most of them do, has a level, you can make sure that your camera is level while it's looking at this subject. So that when you swap the real subject in, uh, if you need to, now you've already leveled the camera. And that wasn't perfectly clear to me in the early going. So this uh, makes a ton of sense that if you're trying to get these things level, you've got something to approximate where your subject's going to be. And now you can put something there and it'll help you line your camera up because your camera, as you adjust this arm, you're going to want to make sure that the camera is on the same plane as your subject so that as it makes its uh, orbit again, Everything is level, everything's in alignment, and you're not going to have any weird drifting that the orbit around it is, is more of an ellipse as opposed to um, a pure circle. I have now swapped cameras so that my primary camera is uh, connected to the orbit itself, and uh, I have a 50 millimeter Canon. Uh, connected to that uh, currently. And then this will connect to the arm. And then what you can do is you just use the ratchet action. Uh, in this case, I may actually, I think, switch this. So instead of being on the arm here, I'm gonna move it up to this level portion of the arm. I think it's gonna work better since it's not at an angle down there. And that's what's nice is you have both mounting locations so you can put it wherever you need it. And then you can just use the ratchet action. And now it's going to support the weight of this arm as you prepare the load uh, for the orbit. And I am in the process of leveling the camera. So you can see the camera dangling down here. There we go. Now. This is where we're trying to level it. Okay, so we have the orbit, so we can change our lighting with the remote. And my moon ball has not stopped uh, wiggling around. So what I'm gonna do is basically just level my camera. So getting your camera level is um, pretty important, so it's worth taking a couple minutes, just make sure that you are getting level. Okay, I think I have my camera leveled. That's about where I want my um, object to be. And so my plan is to actually have the appearance that a uh, beer can, a local brewery, uh, that that beer can is floating. What I'm going to do is take that blank pallet first and record it and then when uh, that is done uh, at least one loop then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in my beer can being s suspended by something and it doesn't really matter what just so long as I can isolate the beer can from the suspension object so you could hang it with a cord or something like that although that's harder to do and uh, not have it potentially spin and so uh, I'm gonna just counterweight this really quick um, and I'm thinking with this camera and that lens combination that uh, about two pounds may be enough to uh, do it I have a third we can put up to three of the counterweights into the end uh, cap quarter 20 threading. Uh, after that, you need to put one of the mounting brackets um, onto your orbit and uh, hang additional weight from that. So it is, is really only good for uh, three pounds in those end caps. Don't exceed that, uh, or it could damage the quarter 20 threads uh, or something else in the process. So I'm just removing the arm support cable 
And again, you should remove this before you run the orbit because you're gonna tangle this all up because it's not designed to be run with those support cables uh, connected. And we're just gonna put some of this extra stuff away, kind of clean the environment up. I'm using a 1.4 f-stop um, lens in order to blur out the background quite a bit. So uh, I'm gonna try and, and uh, follow the advice that Josh gave, try and record this uh, the best I can. And let's get that um, uh, focus set here real quick. All right, so I think, uh, sorry about that, we're gonna have a lot of weird dead space that uh, gets filled. Um, my orbit, Deal there looks like it's actually pretty. Oh, uh, it's not all that level. I have to power on the orbit. And I do have the audio on on my camera uh, so that I can pick up the audible beeps. So the orbit will uh, beep as it makes a full rotation. So we'll just let this spin a little bit here and see if this is the right speed. So there's a full rotation right there. And that beep is recorded on the camera so then you can use those beeps to line that up in post. So you know when I put in the, uh, so you know when I put in the beer can that uh, I'll be able to line up those beeps. It's a little bouncing right now. So I just uh, arrowed up to give it some more speed. 